All right, well, let's get this rolling. Um, this is a, a pretty uh, devastating flood for the state of Vermont and, and particularly for some very specific communities. Um, I, I'm hearing Ludlow, I'm hearing uh, Barry Montpelier, um, Rutland. So in, in any case, uh, we'll get right into it. Um, I, I want to do some some the brief introductions that I mentioned before, um, but I want to talk a bit about uh, what the state's concerned about, what we know, what we don't don't know, um, and then also um, hear from you all. Um, let me start, Jeff. Do you mind if I put you on the spot, Jeff Bordeaux, with a brief update on Coventry landfill, where a lot of this waste is destined? Sure. Yeah. So I um, I was just jumping on. I was curious to see what kind of information is going to be provided today, and I guess I'm the first to throw some stuff off. Uh, we, you know, normal normal operations. The landfill right now is under construction, and just last uh, Monday they were going to deploy line, start deploying their uh, secondary liner, which is a critical point where all the um, this is for a new cell, which would be cell. One uh, B, and uh, the storm hit. Uh, so they're probably going to be a week. They they survived the the storm quite well. They're probably a week behind, but uh, they're going to start building that line, uh, rebuilding the slope, and then uh, continuing on with construction. But you know, for the waste management program, we were concerned about leachate generation. Uh, they're finally the leachate. They had one above ground storage tank that was completely empty in anticipation of the storm. They were moving, or any storm, they try to keep uh, capacity at a maximum. And the uh, leachate goes both to Montpelier and to Plattsburgh, New York. Montpelier is temporarily shut down um, for leachate acceptance because that facility is uh, handling about five times the amount of wastewater are influent than normal, but they expect to come back online with that. It's still going to Plattsburgh. The landfill was closed uh, two days ago uh, because of access to the landfill on Airport Road was inaccessible, and uh, most of the roads throughout Vermont were to get up there. Uh, they opened up yesterday to, uh, I don't know if anybody here is involved with transportation, but to get to the landfill. For most of um, the southern parts, is coming off of uh, the Barton or the uh, New Orleans exit, and then um, coming up through. There's a there's a, a there, the airport road extension. Uh, the only thing else I can say is they plan on opening on Saturdays uh, for the next several weeks in anticipation of trash flow. So that um, until further notice, I think maybe we'll. We'll monitor that and send stuff out to the districts or to all, all involved, all haulers. Uh, so they're going to be open Saturdays. Same with the transfer stations. We allowed um, store, storage of waste on the tip floor overnight until it's get, it gets caught up. And I suspect their hours will change. Um, they're in emergency operations, so we're not limiting the hours of operation in those facilities. I think that's it, Josh, unless you think I forgot something. No, thanks, Jeff. Go ahead. Questions, Tom Kennedy. So I got a call from a hauler this morning saying that the typical route to the landfill in Coventry, now you have to go through other towns, and uh -huh. these towns are requiring a permit to go through their towns, or they're going to fine you. That, I don't know. I can look into that. I know that uh, they were directed to, to get off in the... Uh, uh, the Orleans exit. I said New Orleans earlier. I knew that didn't sound right. Orleans exit, and um, and then come up through from the south. But uh, I can, I can, uh, I'll find out more on that. I do know that the city of Newport doesn't like the large 100-yard uh, trucks coming through, but and, and they can't come down Airport Road at this point. So my reason for saying that is they're not going up there right now. They're bringing everything to New York. Do you know which hauler that is? Yeah, Alva. Okay. And he's bringing up large loads. Yeah, I think we've been in contact with him and did know that he was going to New York. Same with uh, Good Enough. I think he's diverted some of his waste to uh, either New Hampshire or New York as well. Yeah. So, so if that's a rumor, I'll just let them all know. Yeah, we'll, we'll reach out to him too. The, right, um, I can. The other thing, it's not necessarily the landfill, but it's also the the Murph and Rutland is closed. 
Cosella has been doing some, I don't know, something or other, but they can't get recyclables. So there's no place down here to bring recyclables. I know there was some temporary closures. Uh, Central Vermont was closed yesterday, plans to be open today. Uh, small facility, uh, Cambridge was closed yesterday, which is a critical day because it's Wednesday and they're only open two days a week and that will be, uh, they'll be open on Saturday. Yeah, no, this is Casella's big Murph and and Rob. No, I, under, I understand. Yeah, so they're saying at least at least Monday now is a projection for when they might be open. But right now they're closed. Yeah. And again, I'm I don't I'm getting that secondhand. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, right. The other thing I might just add on the landfill is, uh, you know, their permanent takes six hundred thousand tons a year. Typically, they're around five sixty a year. Um. I don't know, uh, and same with these transfer stations, you know, we have daily and yearly tonnage limits. Uh, in the past, uh, after Hurricane Irene, I know we lifted those uh, under emergency order, and, you know, I don't know what the anticipation is at the landfill, but we're monitoring that as well. Yeah, Jeff, thanks for bringing that up. I think as the program receives those requests, we we can communicate those up, And um, but I, I, I I would say similar to Irene, we're, we're sympathetic to the need um, given the ramifications of the flood. So um, I think the program is ready to to try and initiate that ability to, to for capacity um, as needed. Uh, that also might apply to the tip floor stuff Jeff was talking about. And and if Rutland is not taking recyclables and that needs to stay on tip floors as well, I think exercising leniency there makes sense. Um, and Mark Shea, anything you wanted to say about Rutland uh, since you're so close to it, Rutland Murph? Yeah, they've been they've been diligently trying to work in there. There's a bailer that's out, and right. um, the pots are <clears throat> pots and looking for pots. And uh, I guess they found a new pot now instead of refurbished pots. And um, they're they're panically they they're all all hands on deck to get this done. All right. Well, Monday sounds good. Jeff Bordeaux, yeah. thanks. Any anything else I missed, Jeff, or are you good? I'm good. All right. It's nice Great. to see everyone. It it absolutely is. Um, let me quickly do some introductions. Uh, Stephen Young, I'm going to pick on you. Um, Stephen's one of our our newest employees, um, and I'll let him talk about where he came from. And uh, and we often think about because a lot of you've been here a while. Who did, who did they fill in for? Who are they filling in for? Well, Casey has moved on. Casey Catherine. Um, to another part of uh, the Waste Management Prevention Division, um, but we are very excited to welcome Stephen. Stephen, just tell us a little bit about where you where you worked before. Yeah, uh, so hello, I'm Steve Young. I've been with Solid Waste Management now for about three months. Um, before that, I was a chemist at the Vermont Ag Lab for about four years and at Endyne Labs for four years before that. Uh, so I kind of just took over some of the groundwater stuff for Casey, and then I've been working pretty closely with uh, Jeff Bordeaux up at the landfill. So yeah, pleasure to meet everybody. Thanks, Stephen. Um, it's great to have you here. And then Charlene DeAndrea, can I, um, DeAndrea, sorry, I always do that. <laughs> can I pick on you, Charlene? Um, Charlene's also one of our newest employees, and she has been hitting the ground running uh, with a lot of your haulers. Go ahead, Charlene. Hi. I'm Charlene. Um, some of you may have known Cheryl Hamilton. Um, she issued waste transporter permits in the past, but she has retired, and so I am in her old position. Um, I started with the division about a year and a half ago now. Um, I started in an administrative position and have since um, been able to move up and take this one, and super excited to be here. Um, yeah, nice to meet some of you. Yeah, and if you haven't had the chance to talk to Charlene, she's exceptionally responsive and knows a lot about the hauler. So if you need to have questions, um, she's in Barb's section and uh, she's an excellent, excellent addition to our team. And then Shannon Choquette, tell us where you came from. Where have you been? Yeah, um, so hi everyone. As a lot of you know, I was with the NEK, um, started out there as their AmeriCorps member. Um, you know, shout out to that whole process. You know, the ECO program stands for, stands for Environmental Career Opportunities. And so I feel like this really worked out for me because um, now it is, I feel like, a career and I'm very excited about that. Um, but yeah, I did actually move to New Hampshire about two months ago. 
Um, and so I did leave the NEK. I am unfortunately more in the flatlands, um, but you know, I'm very excited for being able to stay invested in the world of sustainable material management in the state of Vermont. Um, I haven't really started to dive deep into how things are here in New Hampshire, but um, I'm very grateful for everything we have in Vermont that's going on. So I'm really happy to support it and be a part of it. Thanks, Shannon. All right, I want to get right into the meat of the flood stuff. Um, FEMA is probably in many of your brains, and since you went through Irene and then also COVID, you're pretty aware of what FEMA means. Um, there was somebody on the news today talking about um, basically saving your receipts, taking pictures, but don't stop doing your re recovery. You need to do it. So uh, I think that's where we're at. Um, I do have a communication from Vermont Emergency Management that talks about uh, it's two municipalities. Many of you have probably already received this through your regional planning commission or through your municipalities or directly um, that I, but I intend to send it out from the solid waste program to share whatever we know about uh, the FEMA and reimbursables for major disaster declarations. Um, so I'll be sending that out or Mia will or Ann within uh, within the day today. Uh, um, uh, we also have been working to set up an ANR DEC, really an ANR flood response web page. Um, if you go to ANR's website, you'll see um, a banner for the flood web page. And there's not much on it right now because we've been standing it up this week. Two major press releases that have gone out have to do with pumping basements because they have oil, just like they did in Irene, um, and, <clears throat> and um, flood debris management, which is where you all come in. We have really prioritized um essentially uh and thank you for putting in the chat the flood uh link there so anybody in the chat you can check it and you can click on the flood link the other press release that's gone out is about is about a flood debris management um thanks to barb for finding our our irene era flood handout we revised that um, it does point to the most important waste we're trying to keep out of the waste stream is paint hhw hazardous materials you know the list um you know we're seeing a Appliances pulled out of basements with Freon in them. Um, we want people to manage those well. This is really challenging when haulers are are uh, being called upon for roll offs left and right. When uh, people like Theron have <laughs> flooded facilities, this is an excruciatingly challenging time. So we realize that we're simultaneously asking the public to meet the moment to keep these materials separate, and then we're asking you all to help serve that need. The question then is, how do we serve that need? Um, and how do we fund it and how do we do it? And, and I think there's funding it and there's logistically meeting it, especially I'm thinking of Theron with their facilities that are down. I hope we can talk about some of the nuts and bolts today. Um, I wanted to say that the program is open to um, temporary storage type uh, placement of materials like HHW that's at least containerized and protected. Luckily, we don't have to worry about freezing right now. We do have to worry about maybe more rain events. So as long as the materials can be in a container um, and not going to be causing a spill, I, we're very open to temporary storage. Um, even if it's not at a facility, we would prefer it at a facility, I think. Um, but I think what we would like as a, as a beginning point, if you need to store stuff um, outside of a facility or outside of something that's permitted already, uh, please let Dennis's team know in the certification program. Um, please just let them know and and then let us know when it has moved. These are this would be considered temporary. Um, this would be considered an emergency type situation. Um, and some of you may be seeking to utilize that. Um, Dennis or Ben, anything you wanted to add or on those lines? Yeah, if you could, if you could just let us know what you're what you're up to. I mean. You may want to use, uh, I don't know, a parking lot for a business to stage stuff on, and that would be perfectly fine. But we just like to know about it and, uh, you know, think in terms of how long is material going to be there before you move it and things of that nature. But, you know, pretty much all hands on deck and whatever works for you um, will work with you. And there may also be contingency for, for the facilities that weren't inundated and, and wiped out or impacted by the flooding at all. There may be contingency provisions in the facility management plans already that deal with uh, night drops of HHW materials. And maybe you can kind of tap those pre, uh, protocols and just have temporary storage for them in the meantime until this stuff gets sorted out. But some of that stuff might already be in place. Thanks, Ben. 
Um, before I turn it over to you all, let me just say I don't have all the answers right now. It has been a very chaotic week, um, but I'm not I'm not shirking any responsibilities. I'm standing in for Matt Chapman as well, who's on vacation this week, and we have vacations all throughout state government, so that's causing some havoc uh, here as well. But let me say that um, uh, we, whenever I talk to my partners, we were, I was talking to the EPA yesterday um, as a part of the basement issue that we were immediately under. Uh, um, but I believe the EPA has helped in the past during Irene. Barb Schwenton reminded me that they helped with some co collections. Uh, she was saying that Weathersfield got collected twice for HHW uh, post Irene. Um, when I was talking to EPA, it was really my colleague Tim Cropley who was really focused on the on the spill side of it. But he was asking them to focus on the southern part of the state where it's harder for us to serve. So the, the counties of Rutland County, Wyndham County, Windsor, and Bennington as places where the EPA could be maybe most helpful. That was for a different topic. It was really about spills. Um, I may have the opportunity to ask them about uh, their help with HHW as well. Um, so that's to be determined. I, I think I'm meeting with them again on Friday, um, but let me turn it over to you all and see what your issues are, what your questions are, um, how we can possibly help each other at this moment. Darren, go ahead. All right, well, uh, I'll just jump right in. So um, as you mentioned, Josh, um, our, our recycling facility where we take all the EPR materials is under about four feet of muck. Um, so, and we have uh, a lot of a lot of flood damage and bury muck pillar through that whole river corridor. Um, so we're looking at getting these, uh, these temporary debris storage sites set up, um, but, um, I've never done that before, so if any any guidance you can provide on on the process of that. Um, I know we have that that plan, um, and I've skimmed through that, but um, really I'm looking for contacts for um, for those sites, like for the Central Vermont Transfer Station, um, that we can <clears throat> get that set up. And as far as logistics and resources that we can use for that, um, I'm, I'm thinking that. You know, we basically direct all our haulers and everybody to to bring all the flood debris up to those sites for temporary storage so that at some point we can get there uh, with some staff and, um, so, you know, pick through, you know, pick the things out that we want to keep out of the landfill and then send the rest on. Um, I'm curious what what kind of resources ANR and DEC has that that they could contribute as far as staff or um, or that kind of thing for for getting those those places set up and uh, and getting Casella on board with 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 uh, having those designated sites. Um, I know they're picked out already, but I don't know how much has been done to um, to set them up uh, for this yet. There's there's a lot packed in there, Theron. I think um, I think let me let me just start with the the things are happening regardless of us as we know. Um, and this is a response. People are getting ready to clean up. Yesterday, Montpelier was cleaning up uh, in droves, um, and roll offs are probably flying out the door, and they're and the city's just going to be dumping stuff. Um, to the extent we can focus that energy to get the most toxic materials out, that's where that's where my priority is, and I think that's where I mean. It's, Pal districts come in to play and alliances and independent towns. Um, and I sent uh, as a Hail Mary after those press releases came out, I sent uh, the city of Montpelier and the city officials in Barrie the best I could our press releases on the pump out of basements and also the thing about our flood debris. I'm going to do a quick share of my screen right now just to share, so, you know, in case anybody hasn't seen it, I'm going to share the, um, the flood debris flyer. I mean, we are really focused on the most dangerous waste, um, hazardous waste, chemicals, cleaners, you guys know the list, propane cylinders, paint, varnish, batteries, electronics, mercury products, tires, and then some large appliances. We're not talking about recyclables or food waste that we're expecting those to go in the trash. There are allowances for that. The, first of all, the recyclables are covered in mud. They're not recyclable. So um, uh, that's where the focus is. This is the document. Let me make this a little smaller. So at least you can see the whole thing. Here's our phone number to help direct people to the best extent we can. Um, 
I think I think to prioritize this material will make the scope of the material needing to be managed easier. Um, so we're not talking about staging places to dump C and D debris or carpets um, that can go straight to disposal, whether whether we get a request or whether somebody sets up. We in early discussions with Casella, there was some talk that they might even use tractor trailers, MBI trailers like directly in a in a city or town. I don't know that that's happened yet. I feel like it's probably with CV transfer opening back up. Um, that's CV transfer station, by the way, Central Vermont transfer station on Route 2 in East Montpelier. It's a commercial scale transfer station. It is operational, and I expect a lot of the waste will go there from Barry and Montpelier. Um, but to the extent that you find a location or we can be helpful in finding Central Vermont Solid Waste District, a location, I'm willing to put some staff time behind that, um, a location to temporarily stage HHW. And my concern is that with the, the rain that's happening on my roof right now, is that whatever containerization happens that we don't it doesn't allow more infiltration of water really like you know you just don't want the stuff overflowing onto the pay, the parking lot um so gaylords that are lined with plastic bags are great um but they are also cardboard and they don't have a top on them that's that's easily fitting so i think how to how to manage around that would be the concern um and maybe there's some people here more expertise than me on thoughts or also about sharing services between each other open open floor feel free to raise your hand or yeah I, I have a question bob spencer yes hi um i i live in vernon which has one of the large hydroelectric dams um the last one in vermont before you get down to turner's falls massachusetts anyway there's a gigantic lots of mat uh, at the in the eddy below the dam and uh, also there's a huge mat building up around the abutments to the new bridge that's being built uh, across the river in Brattleboro from Brattleboro to uh, Hinsdale New Hampshire anyway I was looking with binoculars pretty closely yesterday there are dozens of barrels propane tanks I mean, canoes, you know, you name it, like you see what's going coming down the river, it's just floating. And I didn't know whether there was any formal plan to manage that with who who's responsible for that. I've also, and there's also boats um, that have been torn loose. And not that I want to get involved with it, but it certainly is an opportunity to get that stuff out of the, out of the river, it's concentrated. I'm yeah, wondering that's what, the water, what the waterways people think. I I know that dams usually have one of those long claw excavators to remove tree debris, but this is an anomaly when you get boats and propane tanks, and then you get a real fire hazard when you talk in those propane tanks. Um, I know <clears throat> briefly, anecdotally, City of Montpelier has propane tanks tipped over all over the place, um, which is a real hazard as the cleanup on, is ongoing. Um, so I think it's tr traditionally more more of an emergency fire department issue when when that cleanup is happening um, and the dam owner is usually engaged in the removal so the dam infrastructure doesn't get damaged. That's about the most that I know. Okay. So I guess um, what we did and and I I checked in with Barb first thing Monday or no Tuesday morning and it was shades of Irene because my very first week on this job as interim director was when Irene hit and Barb's calling me up came down on a Sunday I think Barb um, just to help us put together our debris management plan but um, so what I've done on Tuesday is sent out a, a email letter to all our towns select boards our board members DPW is just saying, hey, here's the, we updated our plan, our debris management plan, gave links to all the nice state documents. Um, that's about all we can do is let them know that we're open, our transfer station's open, we have HHW, we have, you know, the full programs are operational here. Um, is there really anything else we should be doing as swimmies? I, I think the main ones that you're going to see are um 
if you take waste in a big way, which most of you know, the private sector t tends to outcompete you on waste. They have bigger tip floors and the material, the trash material goes to the private. But um, the but the the appliances um, and the HHW is where you guys shine, and that's where our priority is right now. Um, really, the EPR programs, the appliances, the paint, the HHW. Um, let me go to Mia. Could I ask to Josh? Yeah, just if um, if you all would be willing to communicate to your towns, hopefully they are hearing that they will get reimbursement from FEMA. But there's townwide pickups like we talked about. Barry and Montpelier are picking up. Um, there's other towns that I'm assuming are going to do that, or maybe they haven't started yet because they're waiting for someone else to do it. Um, but it would be on, as of now, it would be on the town to initiate or the district to help with initiating collections um, in the hard hit areas. If that's going to happen, and then they can get reimbursement from FEMA um, for what's been picked up. And then also, you can connect with them on separation of the materials that we've been talking about, HHW and the electronics of the tires. Um, I'm just not sure at this point how well understood that is. That I'm getting calls, you know, from from various places um, about that. So, yeah, I think we need to take into account to the continuing um, transportation difficulties. So if we have towns that are cut off that can't get to a, a district depot, um, you know, the more convenient we can make this for people, the more successful we're going to be in keeping this stuff out of the regular crash stream and, and causing new problems with um, fires or or hazardous materials or whatnot. Yeah, um, th thanks me and, and Barb and I think maybe it would if it's helpful, we could try and um, I've I've been struggling to find a, a town clerk list, but I know I can get it. I've used it before. I think there's a chance we could communicate out to town clerks the, the press release information we've already done about flood debris material. Um, and suggest that they check with their swimming and possibly that the collection location may be at their transfer station um, uh, for these materials. But I uh, I think that if the state does that, I just want to make sure that we're doing that. Um, you know, it's good for us to check in with you about what what guidance is helpful. Um, because the more we're in this together, the better. Let me go to Josh Esty. Uh, we we were talking with uh, Theron yesterday about taking some of the Central Vermont residents up here in uh, Chittenden, and we're more than happy to do that as part of our normal operations. We do have some bandwidth from our perspective, but I'm just curious if anybody has um, reached out to uh, U.S. Ecology slash Republic and asked if they have bandwidth to respond with containers, uh, maybe a tractor trailer unit to keep on site somewhere centrally located down in the Barry Montpelier area as a way to keep that material covered. I know they have, um, you know, trailers, uh, quite a few trailers, and I, I just don't know if they would be interested or uh, able to, to stage a trailer somewhere um, for those cardboard boxes uh, that, that you were mentioning. Um, just an idea, especially if there is already discussion about there being FEMA money, you know, they're, they'd be a great resource just with their, you know, their resources. Yeah, I, I don't like that idea. Yeah. Go ahead, Tom Kennedy. Uh, during Irene, we worked with EPA and they provided containers and things like that uh, for us. And I don't know what what the role of EPA is going to be this time around as far as helping out on, on that type of on that type of thing. Also, I think we all need to remember is that we're still sort of in the response stage and not in the recovery stage. And I think right now, at least down where we are. They're really just trying to get the roads and everything put back together again. So um, we may want to wait another day or two for a lot of these towns to want to actually be responsive. The other thing is, and it sounds like I don't know if it's Mia, who's ever in the SEOC for uh, for solid waste folks, is to be communicating with them and communicating with the 
the regional planning commissions because the regional planning commission staff are the ones that are are on the ground with all the towns and so we should be coordinating with them but i know as a regional planning commission person right now i think the state really is not quite up to speed on what they're doing specifically i think you're all still trying to figure it all out so but, uh, uh so yeah yeah, and that, then that's, I read that's our argument. report that uh, those of us that have permanent facilities, we can take HHW from other districts as well or other towns outside of our thing. That's all waived, right? So, for instance, if Greater Upper Valley wants to bring stuff down to Springfield or something, they can they can do that. Is that they that's could correct? always do that? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. That's no, it's not in our permit that they could. Got it. Okay. And let me just be clear on that point. It's not a preventative that we would that we would be prioritizing it. Uh, it's it's more of a traditional district uh, cleaving off its boundaries and saying this is what we're going to do. Dennis, right. anything I got wrong there? I mean, often when an applicant puts in an application, we follow what they have put in it. Um, it's not that the state is limiting where HHW flows. Yeah, it's usually it's it's the facilities management plan, you know. Generally, you don't want to take from outside your district, but uh, you you could have the ability to do so. Yeah. Right. Thanks. Thanks, Tom Kennedy. Um, you are accurate. Before I go to Esther, I'm going to go to you in a second, Esther. I just wanted to follow up on the SEOC and RPCs. Um, Dennis, I know, has been in touch with emergency management, but it hasn't been uh, <laughs> it hasn't been consistent. Um, I have just like a barely a bit of information from them that I think is worth sending to you all on the FEMA type response and what's eligible for costs that I hope to get out today, as I've said. Um, and I think Tom Kennedy is right that some towns are still just repairing the roads and others, as Theron knows, are already putting stuff out on the curb to get loaders into dumpsters. So it's every, it's all of the above. And mm -hmm. it depends on if you're Johnny on the spot, wanting your property or your business taken care of today, you're doing it today. And if it's other people who can't even get the dumpster in because the road is broken, it's going to be next week. Um, so it's all of the above. And I think we're just trying to respond as best we can. Esther Fishman, please go ahead. Uh, so I was just wanted, uh, Tom, are you saying that you would be willing to take out of district hazardous waste? Yes, uh, under understanding that we do also have capacity and storage issues. So if we all of a sudden start getting you know hundreds of drums i i don't have the storage we have a call into heritage and bob i should talk to you offline um we should reschedule we have a uh, scheduled pickups all summer with heritage and i'd like to clean out all my trailers now and then yeah, have we, a, should, we should we should talk about that tom yeah we'll talk about that but yes esther we will try to help as much as we can I, so i'm plan, our plan right now is we're going to be open at least five days less. a week. Okay. I'm not sure that anybody from our five towns would drive up to you, but it's great to have <clears throat> as an option. Um, the other things, which I don't know if you've seen the pictures of Londonderry and Weston, but we were totally underwater. And um, people have already been pumping out their basements and I didn't know what the guidance was for that, but it's it's happened already, so it's a done deal. Uh, my issue, and I mentioned this to Mia, was that this is not a situation for wait and see. Um, so I'm trying to find a staging area where we can take hazardous waste because it's already it's already been happening. And um, if I can't find an area, it, is there some way? for the state to help do that. You know, we are, the southern part of the state is normally ignored. Um, so it would be great because we were hit really hard down here. Gesta, uh, we'd, we'd be able to help you out too. We we have some capacity and some space and um, Clean Harbors is gonna come, I think next week to clean us out. So we should, we should have some room. So if you see anyone that does need any help, um, have them give me a call and we can set up a time where they can come by or um, let us know what they have and we can accept it. I think Great. we're a little bit closer to us, um, us to us to Esther. Yeah, we have 
We have storage capacity. Is there any rover availability to to get down to areas to make it a little closer for folks? If if some if someone were to let me know what they have in advance, um, there's some. Uh, let me know, okay? Because it's not out of the question, but we we want to make it clear what we're going to be doing, and um, we're very flexible. Um, uh, let me know, let me okay? Because I have to have staff myself. So. Thank you all. Yeah. Uh, John Maglianti. Yeah, just just further uh, on that, we we also have plenty of capacity, so. Uh, for HHW or any special waste, electronics, bulbs, any of that stuff, um, we, we're happy to help as well. We, we really didn't get hit as hard here in Addison County as some other areas, so um, anything we can do. Great. Go ahead, Theron. Thanks, thanks, Don. Yeah, uh, one thing that, that we're thinking um, kind of down the line, and if it's possible, is we might want to do some trips out to our member towns to, to help collect things, um, the special wastes, uh, that kind of stuff. But uh, we don't have any supplies because uh, our whole facility got wrecked. Um, so if it's all right with you all and you have some extra supplies, uh, we might be reaching out at some point to, to request some um, for uh, for that those kind of like cleanup activities, the rover events that that we might want to do if we can, if our if our vehicles work. <laughs> um. That sounds good, Darren. Um, just so I don't lose the point with Esther, um, as Tom Kennedy mentioned, the RPCs and your towns stuff is happening right now, and that's where a lot of uh, communications are happening. So if a town has a public works garage or an existing transfer station or um, is staging something, you know, in a parking lot, um, I think those communications are helpful, but as Esther said, two of her towns just got totally hit seriously hard. So they're they're you know not exactly got a lot of capacity. Um, but I think I, it's hard for us to find you a place to stage, being so far removed and knowing where to go. But if there's communications we can help with, uh, very open to trying to support you there. Thank you. Go ahead, Darren. Uh, yeah, sorry. Just another uh, another thing that <clears throat> that I was curious about is um, for those those temporary debris storage sites that were that were kind of designated in the emergency plan. Um, are those sites have are they aware that they are designated sites, or is that some outreach that we're going to have to do? They they should be aware that they're. Uh that their sites, especially a lot of them are uh, Casella facilities and yep. they are aware that that they are those. OK, and uh, follow up question to that. Do you have the, the right people to contact as far as that goes? Um, do you know who we should be talking to to get those those sites set up? Yeah, um, uh, in, in the case of CV and you're you know, close to your activity is uh, Mr. Deneen. Unfortunately, he his house was flooded in uh, in Waterbury, so he's a little preoccupied. But yeah. uh, we'll we'll definitely get a contact that we can talk to and and just uh, set set it up so tee it up so that it can happen. Great, thank you. I was just going to get back to the regular ways for a minute. Um, it'd be helpful for us to to hear if the privates um, operating in your area are able to keep up with the demand in terms of roll-offs and uh, vehicles and whatnot, because at this point, emergency management hasn't mobilized um, the emergency waste contract, which is for, you know, a national company to come in and, and do work here. So, you know, if, if the locals can keep up with it, great. If not, you know, we would need to hear that that's not working in your area uh, and try to pro provide that feedback to emergency management about uh, considering implementing that uh, that standing contract. Yeah, yeah that that, that's, a, that's a that's a great travel. point from Barb and um, I've spoken to uh, um, emergency management and they they they're trying to get a feel if the local assets are being overwhelmed. 
So anything, if you can send me an email, if you're, you know, from your town or or wherever, a certain area, and you know, with a feeling for that, I think that a lot of the highway departments are probably buttoning up the roads right now. But once they get those in working order, they may be able to switch loaders to load, you know, trash uh, receptacles and things of that nature. So it's a tough call to decide if we've been overwhelmed or not. Um, some of you probably sitting there saying, oh, definitely yes, and some maybe not so much. So any emails you can send me that I can forward on to emergency management if you if if you just need some equipment that's just not available, your your local assets have been overwhelmed. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Dennis. <clears throat> I think um, where we're at is uh, is still kind of reeling from the shock of it, but people are out there as we've talked about doing stuff. As Esther said, they've pumped out basements. I'm not naive to think that people are separating everything. I think some people are just dumping it all anywhere they can. Um, my hope is though that the people that want to do the right thing um, have the opportunity to do that, and I think that's where you all come in. And and I'm really uh, appreciative of the swimmies helping others. Um, you know, Bob Spencer, Mark Shea, Don Maglianti, and others who've, who've offered their services here. Super helpful. Um, I didn't want to leave anybody out. Josh Esty as well. Um, so I think let's see how we can do that and if do that more. If the is helpful for us to hold another one of these calls next week, give me a thumbs up right now. Just so you're on camera. If it's good to do another call, I see one, I see two. OK, so we'll, we'll see three. So we'll do another call like this. Um, I'll have I'll ask me if she can set this up uh, for for Monday just so we can check in with each other um, and find out how things are going. If somebody with a hand raised, go ahead. I can't see who it is. Jeff, yeah, Josh, please. it's me, Jeff. Um, so I called the landfill during the meeting here just to get an update. Uh, they they uh, obtained permits to go through the um, village of Orleans uh, for the trucking coming up from the south. Route 5 is still closed, and so all traffic and airport road to the north of the landfill. So they're they're open for business, and all traffic needs to come up from the southern uh, side of the, the landfill on airport road. Thanks. Anything we missed? Um, yeah, any topics we missed? That people wanted to discuss. Uh, Josh, you haven't talked at all about um, how we should monitor for reimbursement and things like that. Do you do you have all that? Just so I, you know, uh, we're going to be taking on a lot of additional materials, and for some of us, it's going to be difficult to absorb it all. Right. I, I do. T I do plan on sending out this email that we got from. Uh, Vermont Emergency Management about FEMA information and, and for municipalities thinking about reimbursement. So I'll send that out. Um, I'll include a few extra notes specifically about HHW. I think the two things Dennis was able to get out of R Vermont Emergency Management that yes, these, these types of flood debris collections are eligible. They need to be at a point location. Um, uh, I think there was a couple other like it, it's not it can't be picked up from a resident but as long as it's a point location where it's collected from that's an eligible cost Dennis was there anything else there that I yeah I would suggest uh if someone brought stuff in if you could get an address from where it originated that would be helpful uh you know FEMA is document 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 so right. any information that you can get would be great um an address where it came from and then also you know a bill of lading when you finally got the thing, yeah. you know, loaded up and gone. The other thing during Irene is FEMA picked up 75% and then the state picked up the 25%. So if you could advocate for that, that would be great if they could continue to do that. Yeah, th thanks for that comment, Tom. I, I uh, wanted to mention that the Solid Waste Management Systems Fund is designed for essentially um, managing waste safely and effectively, and this falls into that category. Um, and so there's there are often multiple demands on that as you guys know you've received grant funding from that in multiple different ways but i wouldn't be opposed to prioritizing some of that for this event um i think we need to see what that is and see how much we have um 
but uh, it's definitely something I'm thinking about and talking about over the next several weeks with uh, with Matt Chapman. Um, so, yeah, Bob Spencer. Uh, yeah. Um, the uh, yesterday late afternoon, an email came out from VLCT um, outlining the the documentation they recommend, and uh, so I'm not sure how we. I mean, we're insured through passive, so there's a some synergy there for all of us. Yeah, and for and I think I have a couple of colleagues who may be new, Vermont League of Cities and Towns. Thanks, uh, Bob Spencer. They, they the, a lot of the districts are connected with them. Barb Schwentner, go ahead. I just thought I should mention that, um, you know, the normal garbage that's being created, particularly in the summer heat, that can create a health hazard if it's, you know, sitting out at the curb. We've got everyone's refrigerators getting cleared out, freezers getting cleared out. So it, um, I guess I would say, yes, that the HHW is an issue, but let's not forget that regular garbage can also create a, a health hazard. So we want to address those piles as quickly as we can. Thanks, Barb. Mark. Yeah, qu quick question um, related to the FEMA reimbursements. Is there a minimum um, cost involved to get into the program? No. Similar to the COVID. OK. And I don't think you're going to have to worry about minimum, Mark. OK, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're not like you, but just to have a clear picture. So, so yeah. our experience here in Wyndham for Irene, FEMA staff didn't get here to do their verification audits for like months, mm. you know, so you just have to retain these files. And like we set up a product code on our scales for debris and like like Dennis is saying, you got to track the sources. I don't um, call her. But in the end, they came through FEMA did and the state. So I mean, all of your staff time should be tracked. Yeah, I, I can't emphasize enough. How big a pain in the ass FEMA is. And it is document, document, document. And if you can take photographs of stuff, but they are really, really nitpicky. And yeah, if you I, don't I, have I, proper I, documentation. You're not going to get reimbursed. Yeah, I, I totally agree because they, they had two people in our office for like three days, and it was almost like they were challenging our, yeah, you know, our, our documentation. I'm like, you know, so, but. So, hey, it's, it's the government. They're here to help us. But anything related to this response and so on, they will reimburse you. So if you need extra staff or whatever, they'll pay for it. But you got to have the documentation and the coding has to be right, like Bob said. So it really, in the end, um, it's worthwhile to, to be as diligent as you can. I have a question uh, if I could jump in. Yeah, so um, I'm just trying to think outside the box. So let's say we had, we don't transport anything. Um, our town trucks are basically road crew people, but if there was a way for a town truck to collect stuff at a staging area, wherever that might be, what does that mean for transporting that stuff over the road to anybody who will be willing to take it. I mean, we, would we need a permit to do that? That was a question. Esther, are we talking about uh, HHW or regular trash or? I'm sorry, I'm talking about HHW. Yeah, that wouldn't, uh, wouldn't require any uh, special permits for transportation if it's household. Good. Yeah, I would just add to that. Just, you know, again, keeping in mind safety and, you know, yeah. containers staying upright and we can we can talk about that and talk about with others who who run facilities and are knowledgeable, you know, like Don and, and Josh, SD and all that um, for the yeah. safety of your town staff transporting the stuff. Um, you know, another thing and I'm not like an idea could be if you consolidated at the transfer station or your public works garage, wherever, Esther, and then you paid Rutland District with their rover to come pick up that HHW and then 
you get reimbursed from FEMA down the road for that. Just an idea. Um, and I don't know. I'm not putting you on the spot, Mark, to do that. I'm just, no, I'm just no, brainstorming. No. Brainstorming ideas, and then at least you know you're you have Rutland staff who have training with HHW um, instead of you know your road crew who maybe yeah. have, doesn't have that knowledge. So Great. I think Esther, so you can and talk to Mary O'Brien, but start getting drums, things like this. I would suggest as you start to do some sorting before you just. I mean, I think it'd be really dangerous if you're just throwing everything into a back of a truck without any sort. I mean, you could be mixing acids and bases together. And yeah. Could, yeah. And yeah. I think we, those yeah. of us that have can, facilities could come over and help you with sorting and things like that if you need it. Yeah, and you don't want to be doing any pouring off or anything like that. Yeah. You want to keep stuff no. in its original containers. Yeah. No, 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 I was just thinking of stuff in the container. I, I would yeah. not, I would yeah. not sort. I'm not a chemist. I don't do that. I don't want to do that. Don't worry, Stephen Young is a chemist. He's coming to your back door. No, I'm just kidding. Just putting Stephen on the spot. Um, I wanted you to say, um, you know, things like appliances, uh, typically those can be left outside in the weather so that until they're drained, that is very, very common. But things like HHW, if we can get these under cover, especially with the consistent threat of rain, um, I think that's not a bad thing. So think about covered areas, even if it's pole barns, um, or even if it's a temporary tarp draped over the material, um, just to limit the 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 water issue. Go, let's go to Josh Esty. I was I, I just want to offer out. Um, we we are not located close to a lot of the harder hit areas, but from as far as we can be a resource, we are willing to help. So just please uh, give us a phone call. Um, we're happy to you know assist from just you know talking through some of the the sorting issues that you guys might be facing um we get all of our drums from an outfit in albany they might be able to you know send some some drums if that's needed um sort of on a quicker basis but from just from our perspective you know if if, if it comes down to it and we need to organize you know a, a rover event even if it's down in the montpelier barrier area you know we are happy to or or just send hands to help sort stuff um, just offering out us as a resource because we we do have um, some availability. So, you know, even though we're not located centrally, um, don't hesitate to reach out to see if if we have resources that we can help. So I, just just as the, you know, the bigger facility in the state, we're happy to um, consider all all yeah. options as far as getting out and uh, being a resource. Thanks, Josh. Thank and that just brings me back to having the professionals um, like like many of you are in, in now doing it. Um, John Malter, go ahead. Yeah, Josh. Uh, uh, it, it was uh, during during Irene, we were able to get a uh, large covered roll off from uh, the Chittenden County uh, District to store our hazardous waste and at the time at the more town landfill, but getting any type of a, a transportable container of that size could solve some of the problems in terms of control. You just do have to watch uh, as far as putting compatibles together. But and also, be... just to add to that, make sure, please make sure stuff is vented. I know you, we just talked about putting things under cover, um, but please don't store household hazardous waste in a non vented sealed container at a temporary storage site, that could be another disaster. Darren, go ahead. Uh, thanks. So uh, one, one of the things that, that I'm thinking of now is we do have some shipping containers and some um, and, a, and a roll off or two. And I'm not sure if they're still around or if they got washed away, but if they if they're still there and and we can get somebody um, with a CDL to uh, to come move them for us, we might be able to set those up as temporary storage for some has waste. Um, does anybody have CDL drivers on staff that um, that might be available to drive our truck? And we have a we have a hook. Um, truck with that can move those containers but we don't actually have anybody on staff right now with cdl i 
Theron, I'm happy to to ask what we have for uh, availability from our staff perspective. I know I know one of our CDL drivers is in uh, lives in Morrisville and is dealing with his own issue. So we might be low on CDL drivers at this point, but I'm happy to reach out and, and find out if we have anybody that that has availability. Great. Thank you. Yeah, maybe up at the odd or something, Theron. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think if I it's think we're just moving we were, a, if it's just moving a small, you know, a couple containers, I, I, I'm wondering if Casella has some bandwidth to, to potentially help you out with that too. Oh, sure. Yeah, well, yeah. one of the um, scrap metal haulers in the area. Sure. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah, and and if um if one of the public works folks wasn't running around repairing roads, they also might be able to do it. But Barry City, I think, is in pretty dire straits at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, and, and that's where our containers are. So they might not even be. I mean, they might they might not, not even be there anymore. So we'll see. Yeah. Um, uh, Don Magliente also offered in the chat some services for Rover. Um, so thanks, Don, for that. So take a look at the chat, folks. Um, we're just know, about um, at ten. No, ahead, at yeah. ten. Just wanted to add in. John Hurd from Paint Care says they're happy to help any way they can. If you know, there's a large influx of paint. Um, and so just putting that out, if there's any way to capitalize on that. I have not talked to, I don't know if Karen has talked to Good Point about um, yet, but I don't know if it's an option for them, if they have any trailers to set them up to. I think just let me know what your needs are and I will find out what we can do. Great. For lamps well, thanks as well. everybody. I yeah, just want to say for Karen. lamps as well. Just let me know. Just let us know what your needs are and then then we'll go from there. Okay. Yeah, I guess I wanted to express how uh, appreciative I am of the solid waste program staff that are here and joined us today. Um, you know, I've got Anne Bajor and, and Barb Schwentner and Dennis Feckard, uh, who are our section chiefs, and then you know me very, very well. You know Jeff Bordeaux, you've got Ben Goth here. We met Stephen Young, Charlene, and, and Shannon, and we have Karen, who's been here forever, and tons of other people. Um, so don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, I feel like my inbox is exploding these days, and hopefully that will get better once Matt is back next week. Um, I will ask Mia to set up another one of these meetings for Monday um, and we'll check back in. We'll keep the conversation going. Thanks for all your work out there. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah, Sincerely. Stay in there. Yep.